lot of Ukrainian ladies relocated back to Ukraine nowadays. In the beginning, yes, a lot of people left Ukraine and uh, seek refugee status in like Poland, Germany, a lot of countries, but so many of them went back. And again, brief reminder about a few things here. We do have a tour to Ukraine coming up in the end of July. I think it's uh, July 26th. There are still a few spots left. And you can sign up for that by calling the office. You can talk to Michelle or actually Anna Stewart, who's going to be leading that tour. So either or would work. So just call the office and ask for either Michelle or Anna. Other Anna. Too many Annas in one office. And uh, we'd be happy to, uh, you know, I'll sign up for the remaining two spots for the tour. It's going to be very interesting. It's the first tour in uh, two and a half years. How can you be doing a tour during the war in Ukraine? Is it safe? That's a wonderful question. I've heard that quite a few times in the past few weeks since we announced we're going to have a tour in Kiev. Uh, well, first of all, you, a lot of you guys have been asking about it for the longest time, for what, two and a half years now. And um, out of all the places in Ukraine, uh, Kiev is the safest place to do it. Of course, we would never take guys to the eastern border when things happen definitely. Even Odessa is challenging at times, even though, you know, there is a lot of foreigners. I recently went to Moldova. Um, I didn't go into Ukraine, but I was on a, on a trip to Moldova. And I was staying at this hotel and pretty much all of it the foreigners, not only Americans, there are British guys, uh, there are European guys, you know, the rest of European guys. And as they all go into Ukraine, so Moldova was like the whole gateway to Ukraine. So imagine those, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people just going in and out of Ukraine for different reasons, but it was uh, pretty, pretty busy. I can tell, and uh, in, even now, at this time as we speak, I have over 10 guys uh, in Kiev, just, you know, meeting girls and uh, doing their own things, and not, not, not mentioning the rest of Ukraine. I had somebody going to Kharkov not that long ago, which, that was not a bad idea, best idea, and, and I mentioned that. that. That's not a good idea, so don't go to Eastern border, that is dangerous. But Kiev is definitely the most uh, protected city, you know, compared to the rest of Ukraine. So you definitely have power outages, which is not life-threatening, but it's inconvenience and you need to take this into consideration because when there is a power outage, you know, everything goes out. It's not only like, you know, uh, you can charge your cell phone, it's uh, cell phone towers don't work, so you don't have a connection and you need to be prepared for things like this. So you can't call Uber because power is down, you're stuck where you're at and you have to wait for the power to get back in. And of course, there is a curfew, which is actually later nowadays. I'm, I'm trying to remember it's 10 or 11 or what's later than this but anyway it's so later at not 11 I think it is uh, for Kiev some cities it's earlier than this for the safety reasons but Kiev is fine again compared to the rest of Ukrainian cities if you do decide to go travel uh, to Ukraine of course you obviously have to read all the information uh, there is state department warnings and all that but Technically, as far as State Department warnings, is I had this for for a lot of uh, a level four warning for a lot of countries for the past I don't know how many years. So that doesn't necessarily mean anything, but you definitely really need to think about it before you know you want to proceed. But again, as I said, Kiev is uh, fairly safe compared to the rest of Ukrainian cities. So they do have uh, pretty good uh, missile defense, and it's very far away from the active. Uh, war zone, so there is really nothing going on there. So as of now, I mean, things can change, of course, thinking, things can happen, but uh, we definitely plan on doing a tour, and I don't, I, we don't foresee anything happening in the next month or two or three months. If something changes, we'll cancel it, but for now, everything is good, and if, everything is, if the situation stays the same, we're gonna have a great tour. We're not going to take more than 10 guys because it's harder to accommodate the, the large socials nowadays. We don't want to do the socials of four or 500 people at this time. So it's going to be smaller socials, 10 guys, 60, 70 girls uh, per social. So nothing as fancy as we used to have. But let's start with that. And that's still an opportunity to meet people. So you're going to meet people at the socials. You're going to have individual dates, uh, you know. 
So by the time it's said and done, you met like 200 ladies, you can talk to exchange phone numbers and hopefully there's going to be some romance that's blooming and you'll find your special person over there. How many people went back? But, you know, I was doing the Skype calls and uh, talking to a lot of people um, in Ukraine. So many of them went back. What will the age group of the girls in Kyiv for this tour? I would like to answer that question, but I don't have an answer because I don't really know. Everything depends on the list the guys submit because normally what we do for the tours each guy submits the, submit the list of ladies, about 10-15 profiles they would, they would like to invite to socials. And of course we invite them, they, you know, some of them will come, some will not because they might have some other plans for that night specifically. Uh, so it will depend on the age, basically the age of guys that we have on the tour and their preferences. And I don't quite have that information, so I don't know what they submitted. Michelle can answer that better, so you can always call Michelle, extension 2009, and ask her what's, how that's looking like. I really don't know. What have guys going to Ukraine during the war said about their experience? Uh, again, they're back in uh, one piece, uh, just uh, most of them just complaining about the logistical challenges as far as like taking a train, going through the border, it's highly inconvenient, takes time, it's very tiring, it's unpleasant, uh, but at the end of the day, it's really, really about the same, you know, the same women there. Uh, same dating experience, so nothing really changed, and um, uh, women are more motivated than ever to meet their life partners, because, you know, things changing in Ukraine, and, um, you know, they just reevaluate some things in their lives. Since the Ukraine tour will be smaller events, uh, the number of women a client can invite to the social reduced to 15 invites, well, again, I mean, I would still suggest for the guys to send 10, 15 invites uh, all together because not all the ladies will be able to attend. You know, so many are relocated because of the war. They still can live, for example, in Kiev, but they can live in suburbs and commute for them with two, their two, two hours. And like, me, probably will come for the individual date, but uh, traveling two hours each way, you know, and making it home before the curfew, probably challenging, so they won't come. So yeah, that's why we're trying to still stick to 10, 15 invites for the social for the guys. And as far as just having unlimited introduction during the tour, yeah, nothing changed. You know, as many as you can fit within your tour dates, which uh, the tour is seven days. So send us your list in advance so we can contact the ladies in advance, give them head up, heads up. So don't do it at the last moment when you already arrive. It's going to be a little challenging. Join men from all over the world as they take a trip and find their future brides. Interested? Learn more at kievwomen.com.